Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm the King Live, and if you've never used the Guardian before, then you're probably pretty much like everyone else in Valorant. But that is a problem, and today we're going to tell you why it's a problem. As Valorant is beginning to grow, its maps are getting larger and larger. Take a look at when they released Ascent. This was a map with a very open center, well made for long engagements. Not only that, but this was a map where pretty much every wall you could shoot through. Now moving on to Icebox. Once again, a map with incredibly long sight lines and plenty of headshot angles. Lastly, with the release of Valorant's newest map, Breeze, the Guardian is finally seeing the play it deserves and it's because it's a good gun. It's a gun made for marksmen. A gun made for players who are looking for that one hit headshot. And today we're going to be telling you why it may be the gun for you. Before we get into it though, let's introduce our question of the day, which is which Guardian skin do you use in Valorant? I'm gonna be honest, I never bought a Guardian skin before because I really never used it, but recently I picked up the Sovereign and oh my, what a beauty. Let us know in the comments below, but let's get into the video talking about what exactly the Guardian is meant to be used for. The Guardian is not meant to be a full buy gun and it's not meant to replace a rifle or an operator or even an Odin. The Guardian is meant to be the stronger equivalent to a gun like the Bulldog or the Marshall and should be purchased when you do not have enough to buy a rifle but your team is buying or if your team is on an anti-eco and the guardian is in your price range if you don't know what an anti-eco is basically it refers to a round where the enemy team is likely going to be on a safe in this situation what your team will do is purchase up weapons that are particularly good against players who do not have armor to give you an upper hand in the round these are weapons such as the specter stinger marshall and you guessed it the guardian Against a target with light armor, the Guardian only takes two hits to the body at any range to kill an enemy. And regardless of armor, it will only take one hit to the head. This means that the Guardian is the hardest hitting non-sniper rifle gun in the game, and this is something that you can take advantage of. And because of its one hit headshot, this gun is easily a strong choice to bring into the third round bonus buy, after winning the anti-eco giving you an even stronger chance in the third round. I'm not trying to convince you all that the Guardian is a better gun than the Vandal. That's not the purpose of this guide, because it's just not a better gun, but I do want you all to know exactly where its strengths lie. The Guardian is easily one of the best eco weapons you can afford to give yourself a decent chance versus rifles, and I highly recommend that you start considering it if your pockets so allow it. And before we move on to exactly how we can use the Guardian to help us win more games, if you guys are seriously looking to improve, I highly recommend that you check out our hyper improvement system over at skillcap.com. We have up-to-date lineups, courses on how to climb with each agent, smurf commentaries where a higher rank player walks you through how to carry in your rank, and so much more. Come join over half a million satisfied members, improve that KDA, and get the rank that you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Moving on to how is the Guardian used though, and although it's very similar to other rifles, because it is a single fire gun, it does require a bit more precision. You can afford to spray slightly with the Guardian, but of course if you start to spam, your bullets are going to go all over the place. When using the Guardian, it is best to tap fire and master or the counter strafe tactic that guys are always talking about. Because you are at a fire rate disadvantage over other enemies, you want to make yourself as difficult to hit as possible. It is a simple concept really. When you're standing still, you're easier to hit, which makes it so if your target is spraying at you, you're likely going to get yourself killed. However, if you're moving between shots, even though you're at a fire rate disadvantage, you can almost make that work in your favor, because especially in lower ranks, players will try to commit to a spray on you. And you can see in these few deathmatch clips where I'm using the Guardian, notice how after missing a shot, rather than committing to a full spray on the target, what I do is I strafe to the side, giving my recoil time to correct, and then once again, click for the head on the armored targets. This is the tactic that you should really master with any gun, but specifically this is important to master with the Guardian, because spraying is very rare going to be the move. Remember what I said at the beginning of the guide, this is the gun for the precise marksmen in the game and you should take your time with your shots. I'm sure most people watching this video right now have played aim labs or Kobax or at least heard of the games. If you've played them tell me, when do you generally get the higher scores? When you're trying to be really fast and throw accuracy out the window? Or when you're focusing on accuracy and you're just picking up speed as you feel comfortable? It's incredibly likely that most of you picked the second answer and not to say that aim labs is exactly the same as the game, but generally it is best to focus on your accuracy rather than focusing on being fast because when you're fast you largely overestimate the amount of urgency needed in your play and you rush yourself. You have more time to aim than you think and you should take advantage of that. There is another thing that really stands out about using the Guardian though and that is its ADS usage. Because the Guardian is a tap fire gun exclusively, ADSing is not actually a bad idea and when it has that 1.5 times the scope, it really becomes a nice strength for the gun. Now, I wouldn't be ADSing in every single gunfight that you have, but if you want to use the Guardian as a sniper rifle on earlier rounds and just aim down longer angles like Sea Long on Haven and look for those headshots, I highly encourage you to do so. Be careful not to over peak with these angles, but if you're looking for a quick kill to fall back on, this is definitely a gun you can do that with. 
We did a guide a while ago talking about how the Vandal is more of a hit and run kind of rifle, and the Guardian functions in a very similar way. Look for positions where you can take a quick shot and then fall back to a better spot with your team. If you're looking for an optimal ADS range on the Guardian, it's really going to come down to preference, but I don't really recommend ADSing if the target is closer than 25 meters. Feel it out for yourself, but I know a lot of players like to be given specific rights and wrongs, so there you go if that's what you are looking for. Oh, and one last awesome thing to remember when using the Guardian is that since it's always a one-hit headshot, it actually actually favors you to play different headshot angles on the map. Remember when we talked about Icebox having a bunch of those? Utilize them to your advantage. Your fire rate disadvantage is not going to mean anything if you're both just half firing for heads. These angles exist on most maps, you just gotta know where to look for them. But here are a few examples of headshot angles you can use on Icebox to win you more games. Anyway though, moving on to our last thing that sets the Guardian apart from other rifles, and that's going to be its high wall penetration that allows you to shoot through even the thickest walls in Valorant. The only other guns that have this capability are the Operator, the Sheriff, and the LMGs in the game. So this is a really awesome thing that sets the Guardian apart. This means for agents like Sova or Cypher, the Guardian might be an excellent option at times because of their ability to reveal enemies through walls. Not only that, but when buying the Guardian, you're still very mobile if you have to retake, as compared to how you'll feel when buying an Odin if you're going for that wallbank strategy. Especially for a character like Cypher who is so expensive to play at times, constantly buying tripwires, the Guardian might actually be a really cost efficient buy for you at times. If you haven't been a player who is accustomed to what walls the high penetration allows you to shoot through, I highly recommend you load into a custom game and give it a shot, because the answer is a lot. Remember if you shoot at a wall and a bullet hole appears, that means the shot is penetrating, so this is a useful tip for finding these walls. On screen you'll see a bunch of walls that can only be shot through with high pen guns, and although I don't recommend in game just blindly spraying at the walls all the time with the Guardian. I just want players to remember if you see somebody tagged with a recon and you have a Guardian in your hands, fire away at that guy because you can likely shoot through that wall. Lastly, remember, if you guys want to improve that KDA, win more gunfights, and get the rank that you've always wanted, then be sure to check out skillcap.com. Link in the description below. The Guardian is an underrated gun, and as maps start to get larger and larger, Valorant is going to see more play from the Guardian for sure. Sometimes it does feel slightly too expensive, I will say, but I do find myself purchasing the Guardian from time to time when I'm attempting to force buy with my team, and in many ways, I don't don't feel limited with that gun. Anyway though, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And don't forget to answer our question of the day, which is, which Guardian skin are you guys rocking right now? We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. As always, I'm the King Live, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.